So in the first video, we had a look at the fact that we could use the reverse chain rule when we're trying to integrate something where we have a fraction, where the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, and they ended up looking like natural log functions. Um, but actually, we can use the chain rule in general to help with integration um, in a whole load of other contexts. Um, they're just a little harder to spot. So let's begin by just reminding ourselves about the general use of the chain rule um, by differentiating these three functions on the screen. Um, again, like last time, I would like you to hit pause, have a go at these three questions, and then hit play and have a look at my model solutions. So for the first one, uh, we're going to say that u is 3x to the 4 plus x. And that means that y is u to the power 5. So du by dx is going to be 12x cubed plus 1. And dy by dx is going to be four, uh, 5 u to the power 4. So dy by dx is going to be uh, dy by du, which is 5 lots of 3x to the 4 plus x all to the power 4 uh, multiplied by 12x cubed plus 1. Um, and that's our answer. We could expand and tidy up a bunch, but we don't particularly need to. Um, uh, we're just going to happily leave it there. Uh, for this second one, u is sine x. And that means y is u to the power 4, because it's sine to the power 4. So du by dx, differentiating sine just gives us cos x, and dy by du is 4u cubed. So dy by dx is going to be 4u cubed, which is sine cubed x, multiplied by cos x. And then my final one, u is 5x squared plus 1, and that means y is u to the half. So du by dx is going to be 10x, and the 1 disappears, and dy by dx is going to be half of u to the minus a half. And actually, because it's tidier for this context, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over 2 root u. And so dy by dx is going to be uh, our 1 over 2 root u, and u is 5x squared plus 1, multiplied by 10x. And obviously we can just bring that 10x into the numerator, so it's 10x over 2 root 5x squared plus 1. So what we've got here is a whole lot of chain rule stuff. And what I want you to, to notice is that what we have is our derivative of the function uh, multiplied, or it's a function, sorry, multiplied by the derivative of that function. And again, it's a function here multiplied by its derivative. And we've got a function here multiplied by its derivative. And in every case, there are some constants involved. So I have, um, I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. I've got my, my function here. And I've got a constant of 5. Here, there's a constant of 4. Here there's a constant of uh, half, uh, and we've got all sorts of different little bits and pieces going on. There's some constants involved, but basically we have a function being multiplied by the derivative of that function. Um, and therefore we can use that to unwind some much more complicated integration questions. We just have to notice what's going on in this question. So uh, in this first one, uh, what we need to spot is that I have a cos x and I have a sine x squared. And this very much looks like I've got a function and a derivative. So we've got sine x, something happening to it, 
and cos x, um, which is its derivative. Um, and in the second one as well, um, I've got x squared plus 5 cubed, um, and the derivative of this is the x that we've got in front. So I've got, again, a function and its derivative. Um, so it looks very much like these are answers to chain rule questions. Uh, the trick here is, um, how do we unwind them and, and have a good guess at what the function in the first place must be? Um, so for this first one, a, my original function is going to look something like sine of x to a power, and this is squared, so the power must be 3, it must be cubed, because then when I do my differentiating, the power drops down to a 2. So it looks like this is a sensible starting point, y equals sine x cubed or sine cubed x. So let's test it out. What is dy by dx? Well, my function is sine, so I'm going to have to multiply by cos x in the front. Um, and this is going to become 3 sine x squared. Or if we write that in the more standard notation, 3 cos x sine squared x. And this exactly matches our integral. So actually, my original function just is sine cubed x. So the integral of 3 cos x sine squared x is sine cubed x plus our constant c. And then we're done because there was no coefficients there. There was no constants to sort out. Uh, my second one, um, it looks like y is something like x squared plus 5. And then instead of being cubed, we must raise the power to a 4. It looks something like that. In this case, dy by dx will be, I'm going to multiply by 4. I'm going to have my x squared plus 5 cubed. And I'm also going to multiply by the derivative of this function, which is 2x. Uh, so I've got 8x times by x squared plus 5 cubed. Uh, and there's no 8 here but I have an 8 here. So in order to fix that, I need to divide this by 8. And now they match perfectly. So b, my integral of x times x squared plus 5 cubed, must be 1 8 of x squared plus 5 to the 4. Again, plus c. I've just looked at it. I've identified that we've got a function and its derivative, and therefore I can undo, unwind the chain rule, basically just by going, well, it looks like this, but I'll have to figure out what the constant should be. Um, so you should now be able to have a good go at um, these reverse chain rule questions. Um, there are a couple of slightly more complicated examples which we'll look at in a, a future video as well. Um, but you have all the tools at your disposal to tackle integration where chain rule is being used now.